done this. You listen to me right now. A setback is a setup for a comeback. Willie Jolly knows what he was talking about. You, this is not going to get the best of you. This is a time that we have to validate ourselves. This is a time that we have to surround ourselves with relationships that speak to our spirit of power, of victory, of being reminded, victory is mine. Call forth those things that be not as though they were. There's no time for wimps. No, this thing called life is challenging. And so I decided I'm going out smiling. Nobody's figured out how to get out of life alive. And so I do things that allow me to help people, which is my calling, to inspire people, which is my calling, which gives my life a sense of fulfillment. Would you like that? And purpose, would you like that? Of course you would. Why ask that rhetorical question, whatever that means? And all you have to do is look at your life where it is right now and know that your best thinking has produced what you now have. People say, why do you look so young? Because I'm not stressed out. I don't do stress. The kind of life I want. Are you one of those people that don't like doing stress? Let me share something with you. There are opportunities there. Opportunities have not left the planet. Here's something and listen to me closely. If opportunity does not knock on your door, Build a door so it can knock. Because at the end of the day, there are always opportunities. There are always opportunities. How do I build a door? Think about people who are doing what you would like to do and spend some time with them. Invest in yourself. See at the end of the day until the pain of staying the same is greater. Time always exposes what you truly mean to someone. Humility is everything. I hope I shall possess firmness and virtue enough to maintain what I consider the most enviable of all titles, the character of an honest man. George Washington Money is a defense to a lot of challenges. Learn to trust your first instinct on decisions. Don't trade your time for money. Trade your money for time. Alex Hormozy. Against those who readily come to the profession of sophists, they who have taken up bare theorems immediately wish to vomit them forth as persons whose stomach is diseased do with food, first digest the thing, then do not vomit it up thus. If you do not digest it, the thing become truly an emetic, a crude food and unfit to eat. But after digestion show us some chance in your ruling faculty, as athletes show in their shoulders by what they have been exercised and what they have eaten as those who have taken up certain arts show by what they have learned. The carpenter does not come and say, hear me talk about the carpenter's art, but having undertaken to build a house, he makes it and proves that he knows the art. You also ought to do something of the kind, eat like a man, drink like a man, dress, marry, beget children, do the office of a citizen, Endure abuse, bear unreasonable brother, bear with your father, bear with your son, neighbor, compassion. Show us these things that we may see that you have in truth learned something from the philosophers. You say, no, but come and hear me read commentaries. Go away and seek somebody to vomit them on. And indeed, I will expound to you the writings of Chrysippus as no other man can. I will explain his text most clearly. I will add also, if I can, the vehemence of Antipater and Archidemus. Is it then for this that young men shall leave their country and their parents, that they may come to this place and hear you explain words? Ought they not to return with a capacity to endure, 
to be active in association with others, free from passions, free from perturbation, with such a provision for the journey of life with which they shall be able to bear well the things that happen and derive honor from them. And how can you give them any of these things which you do not possess? Have you done from the beginning anything else than employ yourself about the resolution of syllogisms, of sophistical arguments, and in those which work by questions? But such a man has a school. Why should not I also have a school? These things are not done man in a careless way, nor just as it may happen. But there must be a fit age and life and God as a guide. You say no, but no man sails from a port without having sacrificed to the gods and invoked their help. Nor do men sow without having called on Demeter. And shall a man who has undertaken so great a work undertake it safely without the gods? And shall they who undertake this work come to it with success? What else are you doing, man, than divulging the mysteries? You say, there is a temple at Eleusis and one here also. There is an hierophant at Eleusis, and I also will make an hierophant. There is a herald, and I will establish a herald. There is a torchbearer at Eleusis, and I also will establish a torchbearer. There are torches at Eleusis, and I will have torches here. The words are the same. How do the things done here differ from those done there? Most impious man, is there no difference? These things are done both in due place and in due time. And when accompanied with sacrifice and prayers, when a man is first purified, and when he is disposed in his mind to the thought that he is going to approach sacred rites and ancient rites. In this way the mysteries are useful. In this way we come to the notion that all these things were established by the ancients for the instruction and correction of life. But you publish and divulge them out of time, out of place, without sacrifices, without purity. You have not the garments which the Hierophant ought to have, nor the hair, nor the headdress, nor the voice, nor the age, nor have you purified yourself as he has. But you have committed to memory the words only, and you say, sacred are the words by themselves. You ought to approach these matters in another way. The thing is great, it is mystical, not a common thing nor is it given to every man. But not even wisdom, perhaps, is enough to enable a man to take care of youths. A man must have also a certain readiness and fitness for this purpose, and a certain quality of body. And above all things, he must have God to advise him to occupy this office, as God advised Socrates to occupy the place of one who confutes error, Diogenes, the office of royalty and reproof, and the office of teaching precepts. But you open a doctor's shop, though you have nothing except physic. But where and how they should be applied you know not, nor have you taken any trouble about it. See, that man says, I too have salves for the eyes. Have you also the power of using them? Do you know both when and how they will do good and to whom they will do good? Why then do you act at hazard in things of the greatest importance? Why are you careless? Why do you undertake a thing that is in no way fit for you? Leave it to those who are able to do it, and to do it well. Do not yourself bring disgrace on philosophy through your own acts, and be not one of those who load it with a bad reputation. But if theorems please you, sit still and turn them over by yourself. But never say that you are a philosopher, nor allow another to say it. But say, he is mistaken, for neither are my desires different from what they were before, nor is my activity directed to other objects, nor do I assent to other things, nor in the use of appearances have I altered at all from my former condition. This you must think and say about yourself, if you would think as you ought. If not, Act at hazard, and do what you are doing, 
for it becomes you.